Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Freightliner semi truck with trailer. It's a 132nd scale Revell model kit, number 85 1981. It's a skill level 1 snap tight kit for the novice builder. And for the beginner or child that loves big rigs, this is the one to start with. There's 102 pieces to this kit and very well laid out instructions. The pieces are molded in light blue, white, that's the trailer, chrome, clear, black vinyl tires, and sticker decals. Released in 2014, these kits are no longer available on, uh, from production, but they're still available at online auction sites. When you're done, the dimensions are about uh, 21 and 3 quarter inches long for the tractor and trailer together. Three and a quarter inches uh, high or wide, and five and a quarter inches high. Well, here are the contents of the kit, and as you can see, this is my open box review or unboxing, as some would pe people would say. Um, and they'd pick up each piece or sprue and try and find some words to describe it, uh, but that won't help you build the kit, and that's what we're here to do. Now you can see that the stickers are very colorful, uh, and they're easily applied. Now. If you see uh, any products mentioned in the review, please follow the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines uh, for those for your own safety. And occasionally we find that even though it's a snap tight kit, a little dab of glue here and there will help secure things uh, into position. Now this kit is molded in color, uh, a light blue for the cab and uh, white for the trailer, and the frame is black for the most part. Uh, but I decided to paint it to get a nice uh, even coloration and so I sprayed it with some uh, Model Masters Pearl Blue for the blue portions and then I used just a small brush uh, to paint some of the detailing uh, flat black and then the drive shaft and the rear axle assembly were all painted uh, flat black as well. The rear axle assembly gets snapped onto the frame and the drive shaft is installed into the rear axle assembly and then the frame and the rear wheels four of each are installed into the each of the tires and then the inner tires are installed uh, onto the rear axle assembly and then the tire assemblies uh, are then snapped onto the rear axle assembly now you don't use glue there they just lock the inner tires into place most of the front axle was painted flat black. I left a little bit of the spindles unpainted uh, so that they would fit properly into the uh, hubs. Snap the front axle into position onto the frame and then the two front wheels are each snapped uh, into the tires and then the tire assemblies are installed onto the front axle spindles. The uh, battery box tops are painted uh, silver and then the fifth wheel mount and rear cross member are painted flat black. When dried, uh, the battery box tops are snapped onto the frame assembly. And then the fuel tank um, outer sections are snapped to the inner sections. Uh, and then you've got the two fuel tank assemblies and they're attached to the frame. The tail lights, uh, two of each, are detailed with some clear red. After the tail lights have dried, they're attached to the rear cross member. And then that cross member can be installed onto the back of the frame. Uh, the fifth wheel mount then is snapped into the fifth wheel so you can then uh, snap that assembly onto the frame. Construction of the model goes together very quickly and we're already at the point where we have what you'd call a rolling chassis. So the frame and assembly is built up to this point now. Next we'll turn our attention to the cab. So go ahead and gather the parts up that you see here for assembly of the cab unit. Mostly the interior was painted with some semi-gloss black and some flat gray detail with some sand uh, color and then the steering wheel and the shifter were painted semi-gloss black and then snapped into the interior when dry. The interior assembly finally is installed into the cab. After a few uh, coats of medium gray primer head dried, I painted the cab uh, with the pearl blue color. And then I installed cab lights onto the roof 
and then detail them with some clear orange. The air horns are installed onto the roof of the cab and then detailed with some flat black. We'll work with the uh, windshield and the lower view window now. Um, the cab has a lower viewing window in the door and it'll have to be painted semi-gloss black to simulate a window or you can do uh, an optional uh, function here which I'll show you in order to make it look more authentic. I wanted to have a see-through window here like the real cab so I decided to cut out the viewing window from the cab and that would expose the interior tub but you'll have to mate those together uh, and mark the interior tub for the position of the window. Go ahead and cut this out after drilling some holes around the perimeter to provide a viewing area to the interior or paint it black at least so that it gives the appearance of a dark window. After smoothing out the interior panel it needed a little touch up so I just used a little flat black on a brush to clean that up and then I took some packaging uh, material that was see-through and cut it out and applied it to the uh, inside of the door panel to provide for the window. Now the completed cab assembly can be installed on the frame and the exhaust stacks, uh, inner ones, uh, there's two of those, they're attached to the outer stacks and then the exhaust stack assemblies can be snapped onto the cab assembly. The grill is attached to the cab assembly as well. As you can see here, the cab assembly is now complete and there's still room for plenty of detailing. You could black wash the grill and, and put special paint on the hubs, but after all, it's a snap kit, so uh, just decide what you want to do ahead of time and let your creativity flow. Looking like it means business, this long hauler uh, looks good from the backside as well. Now we can add the accessory items to the cab and it'll be completely finished. Gather the parts to complete that phase of the construction. The partial fender on the first set of uh, rear wheels on the cab were, was painted with the uh, body matching metallic pearl blue and then installed onto the frame when dry. And then the left and the right mirrors were snapped onto the cab. At the very back, the right and left mud flaps uh, were also painted a semi-gloss black and then installed onto the frame there. And then the grab handles are installed onto the back of the cab. Looking as proud as any show car, this Freightliner is ready for its stickers. As you can see, uh, they add an excellent touch to the vehicle. And if you're careful, you can even reapply the stickers if you don't get them exactly in the right spot. It also has uh, optional um, plates um, so you could choose which group of plates you want to use in that regard. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's a nice looking model in its own right. Now we can get the parts ready uh, to assemble the trailer's body and the uh, reefer uh, refrigeration unit into position. Once again, I decided to paint the trailer body for a good overall finish. And so I sprayed it with some testers gloss white. Then the refrigeration grill were masked off and painted with some semi-gloss black. The grill and the control panel can then be snapped into the refrigeration unit and then that unit is attached to the trailer body. Get these parts out of the kit to assemble the bottom of the trailer. The fuel tank back and front are then painted silver and the trailer floor gets sprayed gloss white. The right, left, and right leg support and left leg support and the leg brace and gearbox can be painted semi-gloss black and the crank is painted semi-gloss black and silver. Let those thoroughly dry. At this point there's options here for the legs um, and you can choose either the shorter legs if it's going to be attached to your uh, cab and fifth wheel or longer legs if the uh, trailer is going to be displayed uh, as a standalone unit. Now first the fuel back uh, can be attached to the front and then the tank assembly can be snapped to the trailer floor. Now the uh, right leg and the support 
and left leg and support are put together. And then the assembly on the right side is attached to the leg brace and then the left leg support assembly is attached to the leg brace. The gearbox can be attached now to the left leg support assembly and the crank is installed onto the gearbox. The leg support assembly then can be attached to the trailer floor. There are the suspension parts for uh, painting and then um, later after they've dried we'll assemble those. Now the left rear and right rear axle outer supports, the cr center cross member and the front cross member along with the left uh, rear inner axle supports to each and the right and then they can all be painted uh, semi-gloss black and let uh, thoroughly dry. The left and right rear axle inner supports are attached to the axle assembly and then the center cross member can be installed between the left and right rear axle inner supports. Now the second set of uh, rear axle inner supports are attached to the axle uh, assembly there and then the front cross member is attached between the two left and right rear axle inner supports. Now the rear axle outer supports are attached to the axle assembly. Paint the air tank rear and front uh, silver and then the rear cross member can be painted semi-gloss black. Uh, assemble the air tank halves and install that to the center cross member. And then the rear cross member is attached to the rear axle outer support and the axle assembly. Locate the four wheels out of the kit and the lever which is painted semi-gloss black. The four wheels then are installed into the four tires and the inner wheels are installed onto the axle assembly and then the tire assemblies are snapped onto the axle the assembly there locking the inner tires in place. Now the lever is installed between the left rear inner axle support and the right rear inner axle support uh, just by the front cross member. Stage the small parts here for painting and then assembly and then the left and right frame rail and the rear bumper uh, bar they're painted semi-gloss black and the tail lights are semi-gloss black and silver with some clear red for the lenses. Now the doors are sprayed uh, gloss white to match the trailer. At this point you'll find that there is an option to place the axle assembly in one of three different positions on the rails. In my assembly I put it in the rearmost position. Now first the left and right rails are snapped onto the trailer floor and then the rear bumper bar is attached to both of the rails. Next the axle assembly is installed onto the left and right rail and the left side gets decals. And then as you've uh, already discussed choose the position for your axle assembly in the rear. Here is a view of the rear of the trailer with the uh, stickers installed and as you can see they give a finished and professional look to your trailer. So uh, go ahead and place those in position as you see fit. And we also have uh, uh, a shot here of the front of the trailer uh, as sitting on short legs. So it does have a tilt to it but you can see how she looks. Now it's time to uh, uh, apply those bright blue uh, contrasting stickers to the right side of the trailer with decals number uh, 1 and 7. And the trailer body then can be attached to the trailer floor and the left and right uh, tail lights installed onto that. And as you saw earlier, uh, if you haven't done so, install the uh, doors onto the rear of the trailer assembly. To uh, clarify that, the, the trailer doors, they have a hinge on them that slides into the holes on the uh, floor and the body. Uh, as you can see here in the uh, photos, the arrow points to the hole at the base and then there's one corresponding in the top area there. Now, we're going to uh, demonstrate here an issue with the uh, kit that you may want to address. It's up to you. But, you know, the doors are able to be uh, opened. However, there's um, there's some parts that stick up through the trailer floor um, from the bottom and 
you could improve the kit overall by by gluing the parts on uh, on the base uh, from the frame and then removing these locking plastic tabs from the trailer floor to give it a more uh, realistic look. Just so, so that you know, uh, as a note here, there are some parts that aren't listed on the parts index for the trailer that you will be using. And they're in step 10, uh, the 41 and 42, and the 40 uh, and in step 14, and part number 36, the left door. They're shown in the steps for assembly, but they're not really listed on the parts index uh, sheet for the instructions. It's a minor detail, but... Um, just follow the pictures and, and this uh, guide and you'll be able to construct the entire kit. Well, there you have it. This entire kit can be built right out of the box, uh, but with a little bit of detailing and paint, it really makes the kit stand out much, uh, much more nicely and gives it a good presence. Uh, you'll be proud to put it on your display shelf right alongside those uh, difficult and long-term uh, glue kits that you're building. But uh, if you just want one for your child and he likes big rigs, this is a great kit to start with. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on your shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us on Facebook and our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.